Hello everyone and welcome to ML Done. So, so far we've been talking about neural networks and we're getting a little bit more and more into details, but uh, before we go on, I'd like to do a recap and then today we're gonna focus on Boolean functions and see whether neural networks could actually uh, be trained to learn certain Boolean functions like uh, AND, OR, NAND, NOR, XOR, all of those famous um, Boolean functions or Boolean gates. Uh, so let's move on. Just as for a recap, we said that a simple perceptron um, can be used to train a, to, to, uh, can be used to do a classification on a one-dimensional data. And we said that um, over here, if our data is one-dimensional, say x1 over here, we said that uh, the decision boundary is also one-dimensional. Um, but we said that z over here would have one extra dimension and that would be uh, th the equation of a line. And then we said that after applying the threshold, we kind of squash the line on both ends. And for examples on this side, uh, the, the perceptron will return plus one. And for uh, the examples on this side, the perceptron will return minus one, hence giving us an idea as to if the example belonged to uh, class positive or class negative. We also said that if the data is two-dimensional, namely x1 and x2, uh, z, the linear combination of them, would be a three-dimensional figure, namely a plane. And we said that tr by training these weights, uh, this a plane will keep shifting and moving up and down until it crosses, it kind of cuts through our um, input space uh, in a way, which is here, in a way that this line over here, this line over here, namely your decision boundary, would do a good job in separating your examples. Yes? And then uh, after applying the sine function on z, we kind of squash this plane on both sides. Namely, for examples on this side of the story, uh, the perceptron would return a value, uh, the value would be plus one. And for examples on this side of the decision boundary, uh, the perceptron would return uh, minus one. And we said that if we go to higher dimensional data, the z would be called a hyperplane. Now, today we want to see how strong a perceptron is, namely if we have some Boolean functions, can a perceptron find that nice decision boundary between your examples? But first, a quick recap on uh, Boolean functions. So number one is uh, the AND gate, right? So this is how we show that. This is like some sort of a nice shape um, over here. And then the inputs say A and B. Right, and after anding them together, this would be the output. Right now, the AND function or the AND gate would return one if and only if all of its inputs in this example A and B are positive. Right, but if we're dealing with a um, binary gate function, we would say that the, get, the AND gate would return one if and only if all the inputs are one. And if, even only if one of them is zero, the, the output would be zero. As you can see, zero, zero would return zero, zero, one, zero, one, zero, zero. But only if A and B are plus one, the output is one, yes? Or is either one, like, like if one of the inputs, even one of the inputs is one, the output will be one. But only if all of the inputs are zero, only then the output of OR, this guy over here, would be, uh, would be zero. So as you can see, zero, zero became zero. But in all other cases, as long as we have at least one uh, positive input, or in this case, one digit one, the output is always one. We also call these uh, A and B as, I mean, the, the, the condition of them being one or zero as true or false. So namely, for, get, for the AND gate, we would say the output is plus one if all the inputs are true, right? Meaning that all the, example, all the inputs would be plus one. And for OR, we would say that the output is plus one 
if and only if at least one of the inputs were one. Right, so we can negate both of these. So and will become negated and or not and, that would be nand. And we can negate or as well, and that would be not or or nor, right? So that is just flipping everything, flipping the labels, right? So if you look at here, the NAND gate is nothing but AB with a little hat on top of it. And NOR is nothing but OR, but with a big hat on top of it, right? So it's the result is actually flipped of the previous case. So anywhere, so previously with AND, we said that the, the output is 1 only if both, both of the inputs are 1. But as you can see here, in that particular case, the output is zero, and in all other cases, the output is one. So it literally flipped the labels of AND. The same story with NOR. So with, we, we said that with the OR gate, if one of the inputs is one, the output will be one, right? But here, as you can see, in all those cases that we, we have at least one true value in our inputs, the output is zero. But only if we have no ones in the inputs, the output is one. Now, look at this example. This is how I'm going to visualize this data, right? So remember, for AND, 0, 0 would result into 0. 1, 0 would result into 0. Uh, 0, 1 would result into 0. And for 1, 1, the result will be 1, right? So we can say that these three are our negative examples. And this guy over here is our positive example in our data set. So you can say that our data set has actually four examples, right? Three of them belong to the negative class and one of them belongs uh, to the positive class. And this is how I'm showing it. So this guy over here is when x1 is 1 and x0 is 0. So 1, 0. And the color red means that it belongs to negative class. This guy over here is when both of the inputs are zero, right? This guy over here is when x1 is zero, but x0 is one. And this guy over here is the only positive class where both x1 and x2 are one. And the color shows that it's positive. Now, if I were to ask you, uh, can a perceptron find the decision boundary between, the, between the, uh, these two classes? Um, I think you, you would agree that it's actually quite easy because they are linearly separable. As long as the, uh, the perceptron could find something like this, that's great. So if, this, uh, if, if it can find a decision boundary like this, then it would successfully generate two different values, minus one and plus one for all the examples on this side and for all the examples of this side. And yes, a perceptron can easily learn this. That is no problem. Now, moving on with the OR gate, yeah? So again, here we have three positive examples for one zero over here, for zero one over here, and for one one over here, the output of OR is always one, yeah? And only if x1 and x0 are zero, only then we would have a negative example, meaning over here zero and zero yeah so again we have this time three examples belonging to the positive class and one example belonging to the negative class and as you can see they are again linearly separable a line like that like, like this yellow line over here can be easily learned by a single perceptron no problem at all now what about the not and gate or the nand gate as first of all as you can see uh, the examples are exactly flipped of the AND gate, right? So wherever we have positive examples, we have negative examples here. And wherever we have negative example in AND, we have positive example in NAND, in, in, in NAND yes? So meaning that the only case in the NAND gate where uh, the output would be minus one or maybe not minus... So this means that the only time where we have a negative example in the NAND gate is when the inputs are one and one, right? That is the only case. In all other ex in, in the all other cases, uh, the uh, the examples are actually belonging to uh, to the positive class. 
And again, yes, uh, they are linearly separable and a perceptron can learn that. Uh, that's sort of a nice decision boundary to classify the data correctly. Finally, the NOR gate. Again, uh, everything is flipped compared to the OR gate, right? So we have three negative examples here and one positive. And as you can see, again, the examples are nicely and linearly separable. So yes, again, a single perceptron can learn this nice decision boundary to train our, uh, to classify our examples correctly. And as a conclusion, we can say that a single perceptron on its own can indeed learn many Boolean functions, right? However, as long as they are linearly separable, right? If they are not, you need more layers. So a perceptron is a neural network with only one layer, and that one layer has only one neuron, right? That's the simplest type of neural network that you could ever have, right? But there are Boolean functions, or basically there are functions out there that are not linearly separable. And a perceptron can never ever do that, trust me. Okay, um, so in that case, for example, in the case of uh, the Boolean functions, we have a famous function called the XOR that I'm going to show you that they are not linearly separable, and a perceptron can never ever uh, do a nice classification and learn a linear decision boundary because they are not. The examples are not linearly separable. In that case, you would need at least a neural network with two layers. To be able to find that decision boundary. Um, as a reminder, this is the XOR gate. Um, this is how we show that. Uh, there's a little plus and a little circle around it, right? And if you notice, the only times that we have positive examples are when the inputs are different from each other, 0, 1, or 1, 0. But if the inputs are exactly the same, 0, 0, or 1, 1, we have negative examples, namely in this case and this case, right? Now, let's visualize this and see whether they, the examples are linearly separable or not. Right, so this would be the XOR gate. So again, only when the inputs are different, meaning here, where X1 is 1, X2, X0 is 0, and here, where we have 0 and 1, flipped, only then we have these green or positive examples. And where the inputs are equal, mean, meaning 1 and 1, and uh, 0 and 0, we have negative examples. Now, a perceptron is a linear classifier. How on earth could you find a line here that could separate the positive and negative examples successfully? There is no way that you could find a line here. This cannot do that, obviously. Again, we have positive and negative on both sides. Uh, you, you can go this way. No, it's not going to happen. A single line, namely, can never separate them perfectly, right? Um, so you can say that a single perceptron uh, will fail and suffer to learn any decision boundary in such examples, yes? However, if you had more than one layer, at least two layers, yes? This is the type of decision boundary you're going to learn. You would actually be, more, be stronger. You can actually come up with two lines like this, right? So in this case, Anything between the two lines will be considered as the positive examples and anything outside those two lines will be considered as negative examples. And this can be achieved by at least two layers. Yeah. So this was a simple example to show you the incapability of a single perceptron and the necessity of having more complicated neural networks. Right. Um, I hope that this has been informative for you. Um, in this session, we talked about uh, Boolean functions and we we kind of investigated whether a simple perceptron could be used to uh, to learn the Boolean functions. We saw that uh, as long as any function that is out there is lean, has their example uh, kind of linearly separable, um, that's fine. A single perceptron uh, that is a linear classifier can easily find a nice linear decision boundary. But we saw that the second the examples become non-linearly separable, um, that is when a perceptron will suffer. And we saw that with a deeper neural network, namely at least two layers, you can easily find a, a, a perfect decision boundary to separate the examples. So I hope that this has been informative for you. Take care of yourselves.